Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obueda. Be to God, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Or we'll rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transmitting broadcast as we we'll receive the engrafted word of God. And today I'll be sharing with you on moving forward. It is important you understand that going forward is a decision you have to make. For a lot of people, they expect things to turn out right, unknowing to them that oppositions may stop them from getting to their destination. And they keep expecting it to turn out right. But let me say this to you. If you have a dream, if you have a vision, if you have a calling, if you have an assignment on your life, there will be situations that want to keep you backward from reaching your full potential. You have to make the decision to go forward. To go forward is a decision and you have to make that decision. You have to say to yourself, I am going to advance what God has called me to do. You see, if you don't make the decision to go forward, you can't go forward. And this is why a lot of people quit. They felt that, okay, things are going to turn out right. And they keep expecting, but they're not moving forward. In Exodus, you know, when the children of Israel was before the Red Sea, and they have the Egyptians coming behind them, what God said to the people is, go forward. You see, there is a great benefit when you make the decision to advance irrespective of the adversity, the opposition, and the storms of life, and you have made up your mind to go forward. And this is what God wants you to do. He wants you to make up your mind that no matter what the situation is, I'm going to pursue the purpose with passion. I'm going to do the will of God with passion. And this is the key to supernatural living. You cannot truly live supernaturally without a passion to go forward. You can't truly live supernaturally without a passion to go forward in what God has called you to do. Can you allow the opposition, the challenges to betray the vision God has given to you? Your, the knowledge of your vision should be greater than the situations around you. The knowledge of your vision, you know, sometimes people go have a dream of what they want to do and maybe suddenly it's not working out according to the expectation. They feel so frustrated and they say to themselves, why is it that I'm going through this situation? Why am I going through this opposition? Let me say this to you. Your dreams may attract opposition. But if you quit because of opposition, it simply means you're not ready for your dreams. If you quit because of opposition and the storms of life is because your faith is not ready for that dream. Because if your faith is ready for that dream, no matter the storm, no matter the persecution, you will keep going forward. In this season, the key word is keep advancing. Keep moving. Keep moving in the direction of your God-given instruction. Keep moving in the direction of the revealed will of God for your life. Keep moving. Don't look for reasons to stop what God instructed you to do. Look for reasons to advance what God instructed you to do. Don't look for reasons to quit on purpose. Don't look for reasons to stop the pursuit of the vision that God has given to you. 
Don't look for reason to get distracted and frustrated and give up because other folks are giving up. Don't look for reason to do that. Always look for reason to continue. Always look for reason to see possibilities. Can I say this to you? You are the first prophet of your life. You are the first prophet of your life. If your life is going to go forward, your thinking, your expectation, your conversation will determine that. And this is why it is important that you don't allow the things you're seeing right now to keep you away from being who God has called you to be. Whatever God instructed you to do, don't give up on it because of what others think about it. So today we're teaching on going forward, moving forward. And number one, if we're going to move forward, we have to make the decision to finish. We need to make that decision to finish that whatever God has instructed us to do, we have to make the decision to finish. I'm not going to stop halfway. I'm not going to walk away on the plan of God because of the situations around me. The decision to finish, the decision not to give up on the assignment, the decision not to give up on your God-given instruction. If God has given you an instruction, he has given you a vision, you have to make the decision not to quit. Because there are a lot of people today who are quitting, giving up, frustrated, throwing in and saying, well, I think I've done all I should do, but I don't need to continue anymore. There are so many people with that kind of mentality. There are so many people that quit when there is a pressure, when there are challenges, when there are persecution. But you see, if you make the decision to finish, no matter the pressure, you want to stick with your vision. You want to stick with what God has only to do. So for you to go forward, for you to keep moving forward, the decision to finish has to be there. Number two, submission to the will of God. If you will be moving forward in what God has instructed you to do, you have to submit to his will. You see, the will of God is the major reason for living. I said the will of God is the major reason for living. The will of God is the major reason for living. If we're going to live an effective life, a, a great life, a life of success, the will of God is the major reason for living. To the degree you submit yourself to the will of God will determine how you advance in that vision. To submit yourself to God's will. For you to submit yourself to God's will, number one, you have to discover the will of God. Number two, you have to believe the will of God. Number three, you have to pursue the will of God. You discover it, you believe it, you pursue it. You discover it, you believe it, you pursue it. You have to discover what the will of God is for you. You have to believe what that will is for you. You have to pursue that will of God with passion, with a passion, knowing that I am here for such a time like this. I am here in this generation for such a time like this. You see, God gives you an opportunity to do great things only if you take advantage of it. I want to say that again. I say God will give you an opportunity to do great things if you can take advantage of it. And there are so many people today full of potential, full of greatness right inside of them. But because of the storms of life, they start losing focus. They start losing passion for continuity. They start losing the drive towards the vision that God has given to them. This is why it is important to submit to the will of God. One of the keys in discovering God's will is the continuous, uh, you have to continuously, uh, or let me use the word, you have to persistently renew your mind with God's word. You have to consistently renew your mind with God's word. You know the scripture established in Romans 12 verse 2. It said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
To the degree your mind is renewed with God's word will determine how sensitive you are towards the will of God. To the degree your mind is renewed with the word of God will determine how sensitive you are to the will of God. If my mind is not renewed with God's word, it will be difficult for me to be sensitive to the will of God. If my mind is not renewed with God's word, this is why the scripture established in Romans 12 verse 2, it said, we should not be conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind. God's word is the resources required for the transformation of the mind. The reason why we need to renew our mind is because we need to think from the dimension of the spirit. We need to think from the knowledge of the will of the Father. You see, your way of thinking can determine the energy level that will be made available to you. I said, your way of thinking will determine the energy level that will be made available to you. If my thinking is in opposition to the word of God, to the will of God, it is going to be difficult for me to operate in high spiritual energy. A high spiritual energy comes from the knowledge of the will of God. I want to say that again. I said, a high spiritual energy comes from the knowledge of the will of God. If you see anyone operating with a very high spiritual energy, they have the revelation of the will of God. They have the revelation of the ability of God. They have the revelation of the goodness of God. From that revelation, they think. From that revelation, they see. From that revelation, they believe. From that revelation, they move forward. So it is important that you come to a place where you see the will of God as the basic foundation for your thinking. I have to see the will of God as the basic foundation for my thinking. If for me to make progress in my assignment, in the instruction that God has entrusted to my care, I have to think from God's will. I have to think from his word. I have to think from his word. You know, in Colossians 3 verse 16, he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, that's very powerful. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Because when the word of Christ dwell in you richly, it's determining your, your perspective to things. You want to look at things from the perspective of the will of the Father because of the word of God that is in your spirit. So you don't say things that everyone is saying. You say things that are consistent with God's intention, with God's plan, with God's purpose. You say things that glorifies the Father. And if you're watching this broadcast today, listen to this. Don't allow where you are to stop you from going where God wants it to be. Don't. Don't allow where you are to stop you from going to the future, from advancing, going. You, you, you have a future. I'm going into my destiny. I'm going into my place of fulfillment. So the key to that is to allow the knowledge of the will of God to influence your thinking, your conversation, your action, and let your inspiration for anything you want to do come from the Word of God. So if you submit to the will of God, it is the key to moving forward. You know, for some people, they are tired of living because of the challenges, because of the storms of life, because of the afflictions of life. But you need to understand that life is for those who are strong. Life is for those who are strong. Life is for people who allow the knowledge of the will of God to determine how they see things. Are you seeing things from what God is saying? Are you seeing your future from the knowledge of his will? And let me say this to you. Going forward is possible. Going forward after a setback, after a, a major setback, maybe it's in ministry, it's in relationship, it's in business, and maybe something happened that you never expected. When the, when the unexpected happened, stay committed to the revealed word of God. When the unexpected happened, I said you should stay committed to the revealed word. 
to the revealed word. There is a word that God has given to you. There is a word that the Spirit of God has given to you. So when the unexpected happen, oh God, I trust your word in the name of Jesus. I trust your word. I stand on your word. I believe your word. And this is how you rise beyond the opposition. You rise beyond the limitation. You rise beyond the storm. You rise beyond the challenges. When the unexpected happen, stay with the word of God. And there is someone watching this broadcast today. The Spirit of God will have me say this to you. If you give up because of your position, you will make it to your destination. If you give up, if you quit right now because of your position, you need to go forward with what God said to you. You need to go forward with the instruction you receive from the Spirit of God. You need to go forward. There are reasons why we shouldn't go forward. It may be financial reason. It may be relationship reason. It may be business reason. There may be so many reasons why you shouldn't go forward. But I'm here to say to you, going forward begins with the decision to make a difference with your life. Look at Joseph. If you look at the life of Joseph, was betrayed by his brothers, was humiliated by his brothers, was separated from his brothers, was kept in prison by Potiphar because of false accusation. But there is something distinctive about this fellow called Joseph. This fellow understood purpose and also he understood process and also he understood passion. Joseph understood purpose Joseph understood process, Joseph understood passion, and Joseph understood power. This man called Joseph understood purpose. So when you understand purpose, it doesn't matter what happened. The focus is to finish, is to do what is within the neighborhood of your purpose. So Joseph understood purpose. This was the reason why he couldn't give in to the wife of Potiphar. You know, it was easy for Joseph to have sex with that woman. And nobody would know about it. But the funny part of it is this. Nobody would know about it, but Joseph has started destroying the foundation of generational success and influence. But Joseph said no. Why would Joseph say no? Because purpose is greater than pleasure. <laughs> purpose is greater than pleasure. Whenever you have an opportunity for pleasure and purpose, always choose purpose. Always choose purpose above pleasure. Never in your life exalt pleasure above purpose. And that was what made Joseph different when that woman was trying to flaunt her body. Here and there she was flaunting her body before Joseph every day. Do you know what is the emotional pressure a guy could go through when a lady continued to send him all kinds of dirty text messages, you know, it, it comes with psychological effects. It comes with emotional stress. And Joseph was stressed emotionally, but Joseph exalted purpose. You see, when you understand your purpose and have conviction for your purpose and stand for your purpose, no distraction will keep you away from your destiny. I want to say this to you. When you understand your purpose, when you have conviction for your purpose, when you stand for your purpose, when you have conviction for your purpose, there is no opposition that would extract you from the release of your potential. Because if you don't have the knowledge of your purpose, you can't deploy your potential. You, you can't truly deploy your potential when you don't have the knowledge of your purpose. So Joseph understood purpose. So when temptation came, the knowledge of purpose what was, was the thing that secured his focus. What secured his focus was the knowledge of purpose. The knowledge of purpose secured Joseph focus. So no matter the wind that was coming here and there, Joseph stood because of what? The knowledge of purpose. 
The next thing Joseph understood process. He understood that, hey, I have a dream, but there is a process to my destination. There is a process to my destination. There is a process to my future. There is a process to what God have instructed me to do. And there are several people today in the ministry, in business, that neglect the principle of process. It's a process that is actually God taking you from one experience to another that is consistent with his will. He's, he's revealing himself to you. Okay, learn this. Okay, see this. I allow you to see this because of where you're going to. I allow you to go through this because of where you're going to. Sometimes it's not God who brings the storm, but God will teach us through that storm. Sometimes it's not God who brings your position, but in that opposition, God will make his will to be made manifest. So understanding process, maybe right now, you are so gifted, you are so anointed, you have so much of the word of God in you, but no exposure, no platform, nobody's inviting you. You. Nobody's asking you, could you preach for me in this conference? Could you preach for me in this meeting? Nobody wants to talk to you. And you're full of potential. You're full of ability. That shouldn't distract you. You see, when you, under, when you understand process, you begin to take advantage of time. To use time to keep developing your capacity. And that was one of the strategic things about Joseph. He took advantage of time to develop his capacity for where he was going to. You know, a lot of people are waiting for manifestation but they are not processing themselves. They are not preparing themselves for manifestation. What is the essence of waiting for manifestation with a poor preparation? What is the essence of waiting for manifestation with a poor preparation? So your degree of preparation will also determine the extent of your influence and to the degree you're going to impact the lives of others. So the process is important. Joseph understood purpose. He understood process. And Joseph understood passion. Passion. Putting passion in the right direction. Being able to know this is where I'm going to, I, I don't care what is happening, but my attention is on this destination. It doesn't matter the, the challenges, the opposition, because you understood passion. Passion is energy. Passion is energy. You need to have the ability to manage passion. You need to have the ability to manage passion. Passion is energy. Passion is energy. Is either is a positive passion or the passion is negative. But I want to say this to you. It takes purpose to give direction to passion. I said it takes purpose to give direction to passion. It takes purpose. If I, if I don't understand my purpose, I won't be able to give direction to my passion. If I don't understand my purpose, I wouldn't be able to give direction to my passion. But if I understand my purpose, I'll be able to give direction to my passion. Then my passion will serve like a glory to God. So we'll continue to talk about the passion. That when, you, when you receive a vision from God, you need to understand that your passion is important. If you're going to get to your destination. And your passion should be managed according to God's word. You got to use God's word to judge what you do and how you do it. For so many people, they easily give up on their dreams, give up on their vision. But I'm here to say to you, there is a plan of God. There is a purpose of God. There is an assignment from God. There is the will of God. And he wants his will to take the lead in the things you do. And Joseph understood purpose. Joseph understood passion. Joseph understood process. And Joseph understood power. In moving forward, you need to understand these four P's I've mentioned. Purpose. Process. Passion, power. You need to understand it. Because if you don't understand it, you can't get to your destination. The purpose, always, like I said, 
never exalt pleasure above purpose. In moving forward in what God has instructed you to do, you have to get to a point where you're not satisfied with the situations around you. Don't be satisfied with what you're seeing or what you have received. You need to have this attitude of moving forward. There is more. There is more grants to take. That was what was said to Joshua. There is more land. But Joshua was old and stricken in age. But there was more land for Joshua to take. And the same thing the Lord is saying to you right now. There are more lands to take. <laughs> there are more lands to take. There are places to go to. There are nations to go to. There are businesses to buy over. There are nations. There are things to do. Now, when you understand God's purpose for your life, it will exonerate you from limitation, from situations that if they come your way because you have the knowledge of your purpose, he said, I can't settle for this. In Daniel chapter 1 verse 8, the scripture said that Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's mate. What is that? The decision to be different. And this is one of the things you have to do in this season of your life is to make the decision to be different. The decision to choose to take the lead from where you are. You know, a lot of people say, if I have more money, I could have done more. But the question is now, what are you doing with what you have? What are you doing with what is available? Because if you maximize what is available, you will end up creating what you desire and what you expect. If you look at the life of Joseph, Joseph, Daniel, these two biblical characters are examples to the New Testament believer. Why did I say that? They have the opportunity to compromise. They have the opportunity to do whatever they choose to do. But they decided to stand on God's word. You see, if you're going to take the lead, it's because you have the revelation of God's order. If you're going to take the lead, it's because you have the revelation of God's order. And Daniel was a man of the Spirit. He knew the only way he can influence Babylon and influence people in that neighborhood and that community is to stand with kingdom principles. The principle of prayer was very strategic in the life of Daniel. The principle of prayer. This man was a man of prayer. This man was a man of prayer. You know, a lot of people want to do something big, but with a very poor prayer life. <laughs> a very poor prayer life. Why should we pray? We pray to receive strategy. We pray to grow in boldness. We pray to increase in strength. We pray to sustain passion. Why should we pray? You see, I was talking to a friend that said, the call to ministry, you'll be on fire every day until you finish. <laughs> what I mean by to be on fire is to be fervent in the things of the Spirit. You shouldn't open door for being cold spiritually or declining from your walk with the Lord. You have to be a person who have time to read the Word of God every day. Who have time to, you have to, add, you, you have to be addicted to God's word. You have to be addicted to the word of God. You know, there are people who are addicted to drugs, addicted to pornography, addicted to all kinds of crazy stuff. But you need to be addicted to God's word. You need to be addicted to practicing the presence of God. You have to be addicted to practicing the presence of God. And how do you do that? You, you do that by getting into the word of God. You know, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, God gave an instruction to Joshua. He said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate during day and night, and you'll make your way prosperous. It's meditation is strategic for developing your spiritual capacity. You know, one of the ways we enlarge our spiritual capacity to do more and to do the impossible is when we are committed to the principle 
of meditating on God's word. As you meditate on God's word, there is an uncommon strength that you begin to experience. If you hear someone saying, I am weak spiritually, I am weak. You know, if you're weak, the simple thing to do to begin to come into strength, praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. You know, but Apostle, I can't really do this right now. You know, you just try and begin to pray in the spirit. I have some of my teachings that will help you. You can go to YouTube and just type in Faith Man Teachings on YouTube when you will have over 8,800 videos on YouTube, over 1,800 videos on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and type in uh, Faith Man Teachings and then you, you go to the playlist on prayer. I have a playlist on prayer, different types of prayers there. And you can begin to listen to them. Watch me pray with people. Watch me pray with others. Prayer conferences were at, prayer meetings were at, that you begin to pray. Because if you can pray, you'll be able to receive strategies. You'll be able to receive inspiration. You'll be able to receive insights. Because your prayer life is the life of your faith work. <laughs> That's a powerful. I said, your prayer life is the life of your faith work. Look at Jesus, powerful Jesus, miracle-walking Jesus. But in Mark 1 verse 35, very early in the morning, he went out to pray. Very early in the morning, Jesus went out to pray. Why is he doing that? You need spiritual energy to advance spiritual purpose. And without spiritual energy, you can come into the manifestation of greater things of the spirit. So as we pray in the spirit, we break off from the flesh. You know, the flesh is a way of doing things that is in opposition to the will of God. So as we pray in the spirit, it helps us to cultivate spiritual discipline. It helps us to monitor our spiritual appetites. You know, there are things you no longer long for or because you have appetite for the word of God, for the things of the spirit of God. So as you pray in the spirit, your energy begins to rise. And when your energy begins to rise, that simply means you begin to advance. And we advance as we pray in the spirit. You're watching this broadcast today. I want to say this to you. Your vision is bigger than every trouble you've gone through. Or any situation that is before you right now. I want you to understand. This is not a time to give up on yourself. It doesn't matter how old you are. At the age of 75, God called Abraham. And started something with him. And there is someone watching me today. God said he wants to start something with you. So, be sensitive to his voice. Be sensitive to his will. And watch him move you forward. And I believe there is greatness in you. If you're watching this broadcast that you don't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior, this is all I could do for today. But let me just lead people to Christ. If you're watching today you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again, and the Spirit of God is going to lead you from this day forward. I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Faith Man Teachings on YouTube. You're going to enjoy a wall of unlimited resources telling you. So much revelation, teachings on leadership, teachings on ministry, teachings on different areas of life where the Holy Ghost has given me some insight and revelation that I shared in previous meetings, previous conferences, previous uh, broadcasts I did from the studio. So I just want you to go to Fitman Teachings on YouTube and subscribe. The reason why I encourage you to subscribe to the channel is to help you Know when the recent teachings are available. You'll be able to be notified. You'll be able to understand what is going on. So to help you grow. So you can also watch me 24-7 on finishworktv.com. 
Finish Work TV is a ministry on the cutting edge that is helping people around the world to receive the engrafted word of God. So you can watch me on finishworktv.com if you go to the internet, to the Google, wherever, and just type in finishworktv.com. Bam! I'm there teaching. You just see me teaching. You just tap it. You, you're going to stay there for many hours. You want to stay. You can invite a friend to fellowship with you there. So much revelation. So much inspiration from the Spirit of God. So go to finishworktv.com and click and watch amazing experience. And you can read our testimony blog where people share their testimony from different parts of the world that are watching Finish Work TV. God bless you so much. And also, you can order my book from Amazon.com. Uh, 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future is available on Amazon.com. You can order the book today. And Amazon will send it across to you to each able to read the life-changing book, 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future. 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future is available on Amazon.com by Faith Man of Weather. And also, you're watching this broadcast, you can consider partnering with us in ministry. You know, we'll continue to do multiple broadcasts every week, every day to reach out to people. So you can partner with us. And one of the ways you partner with us is to pray for this ministry and to consider a love gift that you can sow that will be a blessing to the ongoing broadcast and our projects around the world. So you can go to finishworktv.com and slash giving and you can give from that site. Thank you for being part of this broadcast until I come your way soon. Please don't forget this. There is greatness in you. And Jesus is coming soon.